So I know I always, my, my name is Ina Irby. Um, I am a mom. I am not a therapist. I am not a life coach. So I went to my library. I got some interesting books. Now it was a little disorganized down in Newport Beach, but it was outside. And so you put your little mask on, they give you a bag and you fill up lots of books in it and then you pay three dollars so this is what i got now joe dispensa dr joe dispensa he's actually if you look on youtube you can actually see he has like a little he has his own little youtube channel i'll try and find it and pop it down there because i had seen him already before i even found this book and so i was looking through all the books and bam i got it i got miss dr dispensa this is you are the placebo and even making your mind matter. It's called making your mind matter. And I know I always read through courage to change and affirmations for the inner child. I tend to like affirmations for the inner child a lot more than I like the courage to change book because courage to change kind of deals with higher power. And I didn't think I could connect to that. I don't, I don't really connect to that kind of, that. I don't know how to explain it. And to be quite honest, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I, I, big groups, large groups of people, especially now after being in these ridiculously large groups of people and not really having your own mind, I am a little intimidated by going to large groups of people. So yeah. I like, I, Mr. Mitchell is always very helpful. Uh, he'll tell me certain things and I realize, okay, it's a lot more fluid than the organization that I came from. And I know it is, I know it is. Of course, the last experience that I had there wasn't very fluid. And people are just like, well, you're not, you're not in the right place. I was got the other one. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not trying again. And then bam, COVID hit. So. It's cool. I um, got a chance to look this up a little bit. And this is pretty amazing. Research on the mind is amazing. And how we as human beings, our circuitry gets affected, of course, by how we grew up, what we grew up into. And um, how we, how, and that just changes our whole view of life. And I thought that it was just fascinating to be able to actually see our brains uh, connected to EEGs and different machines, and you can actually see the brain change. And meditation is really important. Like I said, meditation, I don't know if I put that up already. Uh, for me, meditation always meant, you know, kind of demon-oriented type of thoughts. Uh, it's because witnesses are weird in that way. You know? And the scripture, that there is a scripture, and I can't remember what the scripture is. You probably remember it. Um, if you sweep your mind away, then demons will come, right? And then it'll, it'll be seven times worse than it was originally. Yeah, so that always kind of scared me. And I almost feel like it was crippling in the meditation department because I couldn't ever understand that. And so I refrained from letting my brain ever get, it, get quiet. I usually always talked, but I never to my higher power. Now, yeah, I don't, I don't pray. Uh, it's, it's been kind of hard for me. Um, I don't pray, but I, I do meditate and that makes me feel calm. And I do the deep breathing. And like I said, that long end breath, that deep end of the breath. And that is the most relaxing to the mind, according to science. So I don't know if you can get your hands on. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon and it's quite pricey. 
but it literally shows you all the different brain waves. And in this kind of, when you deprogram yourself, I think you need multiple, you, you need different doctors to help you. And that is not accessible, not in America. I mean, you can, you go to a therapist and then you go to a neurologist and then you go to, and I'm only saying this because I actually have a, neuro, you know, I have a neurologist I haven't seen for a while, but because I have seizures, right? I have seizures. And so you go to a neurologist, they pop on all these little cords all over your head and then they, they research your brain and how it works. And, and that is what all Jehovah's Witnesses need. I would be interested to see what their brains look like in the organization and as they journey out of the organization, right? If you could ever get a witness, I mean, you could never, I'm sure you couldn't do this because they wouldn't want to go to somebody who's researching a brain and say, yes, I'm a full-fledged Jehovah's Witness. I believe in Jehovah and God and destruction of the earth and only the wicked will be destroyed and all the righteous will be, you know, survive. Let's just plug into that, what that brain looks like. And then as someone is, you know, as someone is journeying out, what does that look like? And then what does it look like after? Because it's run on fear. All the, all of our thoughts, all our thought processes are run, run on fear. If you don't do it this way, if you don't get your time, five minutes. You don't count five minutes of your time. You're what? It's going to happen to you. You're going to die in Armageddon because you didn't get your time in. That's just weird. So, and I hear that they're being a lot more lenient with that. That's so stupid. But what happened to the last 40 years of people having that mindset? And how does that affect their children? And how does their, that affect their children's children? Just like disfellowshipping, how does that affect your mind? Um, there was an interesting, oh gosh, telltale. That was neat. When he went into Bethel with, I think it was the cosmic spec skeptic, cosmic skeptic. He was the two very strong young men that went into the uh, organization's headquarters down in Bethel. I don't know. I'll try and pop that in there too. It's interesting. But there's a face that that Telltale makes. It's the gentleman that does all the commentary for Telltale. And you see it after he's gone in and you see his disconnect in his face. It's so interesting to see that because I saw that in my dad. It was like this, he had been disfellowshipped. And there's like a... a, a, a like I said, it takes, I think it takes multiple doctors to deal with people who, who are like us, who leave the organization after many, many, many years of being in this vice hold of thought. And it would be interesting to see how a mind and a brain changes, but I did see his face and it looked so, it looked so disconnected from his brain. You could see it, his eyes. I've seen that look before where it's just like out in, it's just somewhere. You have to almost pull it back and say, no, no, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. It's hitting a trauma event, a traumatic event in his head. And uh, it's hard. It's hard for people who, especially leave. now because of all the um, isolation that we all feel when it's, kind of crazy. I don't think it's ever been this way in all of America. All of America will know what it feels like to be disfellowshipped, not to go to their families, not to be with their families. I think that's quite interesting that all of America will actually know what that feels like <laughs> and how awful it feels like. And you can hear it on the news. And it's so dangerous that disfellowshipping thought to, to you know, that even the thought of being isolated from your family when you really super need them or disfellowshipped and you need to be with people to help you. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad to see that and telltale. 
little his face. He's a strong man. And I, I enjoy all his work. I enjoy all his work that he's done. I don't even know how many years. I like Germ and how he said, you know, we all do this for different reasons. And a lot of it is for me. You know, I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to tell you the truth. This is this is my form of therapy. Uh, never had a voice in, in the organization. And I have one now. So I get a chance to say what I feel. I try very hard to be... Uh, not to see things as black and white now because now it's much bigger. It's much more interesting. It's more, there's, it's definitely more vivid than I thought. And there's a lot more than I realized that's out there. And I'm still very new to the world. So I got this other book, The Mind and the Brain, Neuroplasticity and the Power of Mental Force. So this is another interesting book that I thought might be. It's by Jeffrey Schwartz and Sharon Beckley. I haven't really, I haven't really looked this in, up too much, but I love it when they start diagramming the brain and the importance of knowing what's in there and how it works and that we're a lot we're a lot bigger than our than our thoughts that we were trained with right that we can get past what we are training in the organization and like i say i always read the bible as a book of literature now i don't see it as i think there's good thoughts in there but there's a lot of evil ones too and I see it as a really good uh, book to just be able to read and see what's in there and the dangers that are hidden in there if you let a human being take you in a road that they feel is the right road. I don't believe you should do that. I don't think you as an, as an individual need to find your own philosophies in life and work from there and we'll see what, I mean, common sense, I think having common sense, I think that has kind of gone out the window in America. I'm just having plain old common sense. And science, Take, putting science back into our, our, the way that we are, that we actually train our children and how we train ourselves and our thought process. I really believe that science has to be a key in the way we look at life in order for life to get better. No more religion. I mean, it should have its place. And that's, I don't know. Certainly, I don't feel it's on a pulpit. Anybody given any, you can have an idea and you can do a TED talk, but move over and let a scientist tell you what you just said. Or, uh, you know, I want to know what a scientist thinks about what that is. Stick your head in the couple of electrodes and let's see where you are. <laughs> uh, I think they needed to do that with the current president of the United States before they allowed him to be president of the United States. Anyway, I hope you're having a good morning. I hope you don't mind me rambling. And I'll have to let you know about all these neat little books. Uh, I, I enjoy reading. That's for one thing. I, I get a chance to read other books that are more nutritionally balanced for my brain. Nutritionally balanced for my brain. How's that? All right. Have a great day and follow your bliss. Be good humans.